Welcome back to the Sandbox, and welcome back to Manticore Videos Porn Shoot here in Los Angeles. Thank you for coming back to join us uh, yet again today. So, recapping quickly, let's meet Adam. Meet with an A. River and Adam are boyfriends. They are living in Arizona. They graduate high school. River goes to the big city, goes to L.A., and disappears without a trace. And so... Adam goes to L.A. to try to track him down, find out what happened. He moves into his old apartment, basically tricks his landlady, so he's, he's living in River's apartment, and has tracked River to this porn studio, Manticore Video, hoping that uh, somebody there can give him some kind of information about where River might be. He's gotten a job uh, on the film crew, so meeting lots of folks, and uh, hopefully one of them can give him the, the clue that he needs. We're in a clue hunt, so it's like Scooby and the gang, you know, uh, searching the old warehouse, uh, looking for, for clues. Who's wearing that mask? Uh, hopefully we find out in the end. All right. So, without further ado, the scene finally comes to an end. The entire while I blush bright red. The back of my shirt speckled with different sized circles of sweat. Ah, found you. So, how did you find it? Um, it was actually really hot. <laughs> Ellip that ellipsis between really and hot is doing a lot of work there. Um, I can look past it. Job's a job. Spend one insight or it was vile. Okay, well, that last one's probably not going to get us any information. And so far, we've found that spending our insight points here uh, has usually been pretty good. So let's try that. Admirable. Despite his alarming size, I felt pretty safe around Hunter. Perhaps, if we get close, eventually I could ask him about River. I feel if he knew something regarding my best friend, he'd tell me. I do hope as well that Tad didn't give you too hard a time. Uh, no, no, not at all. You can try to forgive him, as he can be, uh, weak-minded. But certainly not you, Adam. There's a strength about you. Truly, it reminds me of someone I know. Oh, um, could that person be Obzi, perhaps? Obzi is indeed fearsome. I admire his strength most of all. A good guess, but no. Sky was... As soon as his name was brought to the surface, Hunter purses his lips and trails off. Say, Hunter? But before I can ask anything, Tad appears with an earshot. And I curse his crappy timing. The entire film crew will be returning to the studio. You should see yourself back as well. Drive safe. I, I will. Thanks, Hunter. So he knows Sky, and to him, Sky had a lot of strength. Mm, we probably want to talk to Hunter more about Sky. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again. back at the studio. We get back to the studio early afternoonish. I unpack and place back into storage some of the film equipment that the crew brought. And that's when I notice my stomach growling uncomfortably. It's my fave time of day, which is lunchtime. Soren appears with perfect timing, as always. Did he hear my rumblings? I know. I am starved, Soren. We didn't get a moment to take a break on the set. Well, if you're up for it. There's a seafood place nearby that I like for lunch. 
Is he asking me out? He might be asking me out. It's a little pricey, but it makes my tummy happy. Hey, fantastic job today, Adam. You truly impressed this old bastard, huh? <laughs> and that's not easy to do, let me tell you. Hey, come join me for lunch at Shakey's. I think it's important to celebrate even minuscule milestones in life. Oh, uh, well, S Soren had already invited me out to lunch, so... Hey, nonsense! Soren, my most beloved assistant. Let's all go to lunch together then, huh? <laughs> Wicked! Yeah, this'll be dope! Come on, Soren! We've never had lunch before, bruh! I noticed Timmy's voice crack a little at this. We can go over my Tinder and, uh, uh, I can show you all the crazy messages I get. So does Timmy have a thing for Soren? I think that's what the implication is here, that Timmy has kind of a, carrying a torch a little bit for Soren. Yeah, just come look at my Tinder account. Uh, and on that note, no. Soren brings a bald fist up to his face. Gestures like he's rubbing tears out of one eye. Anyways, I'm on a seafood-only diet. I'll be going to Port and Pier. I look over at Timmy, and I briefly catch a hurt expression. But he quickly shakes it off, responding in his usual demeanor. Huh, I can't stand that fishy sh you on your own with that. Well, uh, what do you say, Adam? Oh, gosh. Honestly, I'd probably be more comfortable with Soren and maybe work River into the conversation somehow. And then again, I could subtly prod Tad about him, too. And with Timmy there... I can see Timmy accidentally exposing Tad in a lie. Port and Pier or Shakey's? Oh, boy. Oy, 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 oy. Okay, so the question kind of is, do we go with the boss or not? <laughs> right? The boss has asked us out to lunch, and saying no to the boss, yeah, that can be bad. So is there a compelling reason to go with Soren? So Soren, I like Soren. I mean, he is the receptionist, the administrative person, and so he knows Sky. He must know something about Sky. But I don't know how willing he is to talk yet because, you know, a really good admin person is pretty tight lipped. They don't give out a lot of information. So, on the other hand, Tad, I know, knows River, Sky, and. With Timmy there, I mean, Timmy's just a loose cannon. Anything can come out of his mouth. And saying no to the boss might be detrimental to my future employment here at Manticore. I mean, I don't know. It seems like there's a chance that Tad could just sort of, you know, shake it off. He wouldn't take it personally. But there's the chance that he would take it personally if I said no. Hmm. I want to go with Soren, but I sort of feel like I can't. I sort of feel like All right, all right. I'm going to go I'm going to go with the boss. This might be wrong. I you know, and I don't know how the game is structured. So in some games like if I go to Port and Pier with Soren, that gives me another like attraction point or whatever with Soren, which furthers our relationship, right? So if this if the game is looking at this as like who is he more attracted to? Ah, damn it, that's another layer that I hadn't thought of. Um, damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, I'm going to assume that the writers did not write the, the game such that I could essentially lose my job here and the game would end by picking the wrong thing. Um, all right, let's let's go to Port and Pier. Um, I'll have to take a rain check, guys. Soren asked first, and I'd feel bad ditching him. I hope that's okay. 
Aw, that's so sweet, Adam. So, you heard the man. You can borrow him from me next time. <laughs> Soren jumps to my side and playfully wraps his arm around my elbow. The cuteness and sudden contact surprises me, but I don't mind. All right, fine, fine. We're taking off, then. Soren, don't spend too much money. Don't panic, I won't. Soren waves goodbye to Tad, while also showing me that his fingers are crossed on his other hand. <laughs> Come on, let's go! Port and Pier, Los Feliz. Soren drives us a short distance away to a, a trendy little neighborhood east of Hollywood. And once inside, he leads the way completely and confidently. Like a, like a wild hunter directly to their favored hunting spot. He doesn't even check if I'm following. The restaurant is beautiful. Grand, but still intimate. And it isn't busy. But busy enough that the clinking of champagne and glasses float contently in the air. And finally, as we're seated, I notice the delicate floral scent of freesia everywhere. Wow, Soren, this place is really nice. I lean over and whisper at him. Are, are we actually dressed up enough to be in here? Oh, don't worry. I know it looks a little formal. But as long as you dress trendy and look cute, you'll be fine. Soren winks at me. By the way, this is totally all going on the company card. <laughs> so, order whatever you want. My treat. Uh, well, maybe Tad's. Or maybe, who cares? <laughs> ah, so that's why Tad didn't want you to spend too much money. <gasps> I would never do such a thing. Soren grasps his chest. As if I've really offended him deeply. I simply shake my head at him and smile. Well, shall we order? Soren orders us a bottle of sparkling rosé and ceviche to share. I'm embarrassed as I take a while to order, since I don't know many of the dishes on this menu. Eventually, I just mimic Soren, who orders lobster risotto, to keep things simple. So, tell me about yourself, Adam. I am super curious. If I'm honest, I really can't see a sweet guy like you working here. Manticore video of all places. Oh, well, yeah, I, I have my reasons. And, you know, maybe I'm not as sweet as you think. <laughs> okay. Do tell. Well, I grew up in a small town in Arizona almost a village, really. My family was one of the only multiracial households, let alone Asian. In high school, I was definitely the only student with any kind of Asian descent. Combine that and being gay, and, well, you can guess how that went. Oh, it sounds lonely. I hope it wasn't, but... I think I can relate. Oh, no, it, it, it wasn't so bad. I had a really good friend by my side, who's also gay. And most people in school just kind of left me alone, because they figured that I was a scary goth. I'm not. 
black is really just my favorite color. There was no culture at all in our town, as you can imagine. Oh my gosh, I totally can. And so, after high school, came your blossoming love for pornography then, huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, no, not exactly. I like to write. Primarily poetry. At my core, I find that I'm a shy person. But I do like spoken word. And that got me used to performing which then got me interested in film and entertainment. Ah, but finding an L.A. job in film is difficult when you're young, broke, and connectionless. And so that's what brought you to us. Yeah, you nailed it. Well, whatever it is that brought you to us, I'm glad that it did. Oh, Kiss kiss across the table. There was no real good time to bring up the topic of sky, um, uh, river. So I resigned myself to just enjoying the outing. The food is unparalleled. And we just have so much fun chatting that time seems to slip right past us. We almost end up late getting back to work. All right, I'll finish up strong today. Then head home for the evening. As I close the door and, and scan my apartment, I sigh and then heavily shudder. Are my neighbors fighting? I press my ears up against a wall. Oh, they're so loud. I shake my head, walk over to the bed and drop my bag. Oh, shit! When did I get spooked so easily? The unexpected ring made my heart jump right out of its cage. Mainly because I'd forgotten I had a regular phone in here at all. H Hello? Hi, this Adam? Uh, yes, ma'am. But it's ten at night. Before your friend left, he put in a maintenance request. We'll fix it tomorrow. You don't have to be home. You're only getting around to it now? Okay, okay, good night. What a strange... Okay, so the landlady's going to be in my apartment tomorrow, I guess is the point. I'm not used to being verbally offended so late in the evening. And with that in mind, I pick up my cell and decide to end the night with a positive phone call. Hey! I see you've become a night owl already. Wow, L.A. certainly changed you fast. <laughs> hey, you know that's not true. I'll never let a place change who I am. Well, this city changes people, Adam. I've seen it happen. Especially in film. The entertainment industry... You know what they say. No one makes it big in this city without either losing, sacrificing, or killing something. Small comfort. No comfort at all, in fact. I subconsciously gulp. My throat suddenly dries up at the warning. I mean, it's obviously figurative, Adam. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Well, um, I work in film now, so... Right! Now, tell me how this new gig is going for you. I don't think you ever mentioned the name of the studio, either. Uh, well, it, it's it's pretty early in the process, and, uh, you know, they, they could still let me go at any time. 
would it be okay if I told you once things are a bit more solid? Oh, I see. You don't want to jinx it. Hey, I totally understand. Right. I've been making friends, I guess, at work. Which is always nice. Hey, I'm so sorry. I still haven't made it out to you and River yet. But work hasn't let up at all. Now, tell me about these new peeps. Do you think they're cool enough to hang with us or what? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think so. The person that I like best so far is... Uh, here we are. Okay. Timmy? <clears throat> no, not Timmy. The Johns are weird. They're just effing weird, not the Johns. Tad? No. So, Hunter or Soren? So, Hunter is interesting. He, I mean, he obviously has a code that he lives by. I guess the only thing that puts me off Hunter a little bit is that he, I don't know, he, he sees his job as just being a job, and somehow, I, I don't know, that, that puts me off. I, I think, honestly, I think, this is going to sound weird, I think I'm too much of an artist to, to, to look at a, I mean, to me it's an acting job, right? And as someone who has pursued acting jobs, um, it turns me off a little bit to have somebody say, well, it's just a job, I don't really care. What? I mean, <laughs> you have the privilege of standing in front of a camera and telling a story. Of course, it's porn, I know, I know, I know, I know, but still. Um, and Soren. I think, I, I mean, I think it's Soren. I think it's Soren. Which is also, I assume, going to, you know, give us traction points for Soren or whatever in the matrix of the game. Well, our receptionist is really nice and probably the most outwardly friendly. His name is Soren. He makes it really easy for me to talk to him. And you know how I can be at uh, speaking. Well, you're getting better for sure. You'll have the problem of fast friends in no time. I'm not worried for you at all. As much smack as I talk about Los Angeles in general, it is still a world-class city. Try to soak up as much of it as possible, Adam. Well, it's, it's funny you say that, because I'm thinking of visiting WeHo finally. This weekend, possibly. West Hollywood? I, uh... I wouldn't recommend that. I don't think you'd like it. Really? Well, how can you be so sure? Hey, I've known you forever. It'll be a bad time for you. You've nothing in common with the dudes that frequent there. You're too... nice. I wish everyone would stop thinking that. It makes me feel like I'm boring. Okay, well, you're too well-mannered then. How's that? <laughs> My shoulders sag in defeat. <sighs> Fine. Oh, and Adam? You know I'm kidding, right? <sighs> yeah, I do. Let me know when your schedule frees up, okay? Oh, I will for sure. Now, you get some sleep. I can't be responsible for you getting fired on your very first week. <laughs> All right, I will. Good night. All right, good night. I collapse on my bed, covering my face with my hands for a sec. And then flap them down to my sides and just stare at the ceiling. Ghostly shadows shimmy chaotically. And I imagine dancing demons atop my ceiling. The murky imagery blurs and I fall asleep. 
a few days later. So, I sent him a picture of a cow's ass instead. Ugh, the men on these apps are so gross. They only want one thing. I can't believe his first message to you was asking for nudes. Oh, it's honestly super common. I'm over it already. He takes a sip of his aromatic and fluffy cappuccino, gracefully wiping the froth from his lip. If only more guys were like you, Adam. Soren tilts his head and his eyes soften further. Well, I mean, I... Anyways, let me grab something from the copier real quick. I'll be right back. And without allowing me to finish, he rushes off. It's then that I notice a book on Soren's desk with a rose gold bookmark. Le Petit Prince by Anton de Saint-Exupéry. I don't know. I don't, I don't speak French. Sorry. Sorry, I'm sure I'm messing that up. Oh, I've heard wonderful, soulful things about this book. Would it be bad if I take a peek where he left off? Peek, don't peek. Okay, well, this doesn't seem like there's much of a downside. I mean, if he comes back and we're looking at his book, we can all just say, hey, I've read a lot about this book. I heard it's really good. I was just, you know, hope you don't mind me looking. I mean, it, it's not like it's his diary or anything. Yeah, let's peek. I don't see much of a downside. I awkwardly scout my peripherals side to side and then quickly open his book. I part the pages where the bookmark stands guard, noting a particular block of text has been highlighted. In this page, the book talks about the little prince and a special rose that he has tamed. It's gorgeous, yet the rose looks like any other. So why would he care about this particular flower? I'm intrigued, so I read on. The little prince stumbles upon a beautiful rose bed, but says, and this is the portion that's highlighted, You are beautiful, but you are empty. He went on, One could not die for you. I quietly contemplate before setting the book back down where I lifted it. I found one insight point. Good. Sorry, I sent these to the printer a while ago and totally forgot about them. But look who I picked up along the way. Adam, this is our Chuck. Chuck, our newly acquired Adam. Ha <laughs> ha, you make him sound like a rundown business. Soren, man, you're out there, dude. Chuck. Hi, it's nice to meet you. The man before me is so incredibly ripped. I look down in dismay at my own body. Chuck smiles and lazily runs his hand through his sun-kissed locks. I move forward to shake his hand, but instead he motions me to a high five. We do, and it's then that I notice a scent of sun and fresh ocean coming off him. Nice to meet you, Adam. Sure is wild seeing a new face around here. That doesn't happen often. Adam here is our new best boy grip. Oh, righteous man. I was about to ask you what you do here. Don't you mean who he does around here? Chuck and Soren share a laugh at my expense. Call it manticore humor, but I simply smirk. Since I don't entirely get it. Oh, Adam, sweetie, come on. You're old enough to get that joke. 
Oh, right on. I mean, Adam's got an amazing look. But yeah, man, something tells me that you aren't like a porn star. Uh-oh, someone said the forbidden word. Oh, whatever, dude. That's what we are. Anyone who denies that is just lying to themselves. Oh, so you're a porn a, a performer a, as well? A cast member here at Adult Disneyland? Chuck stars in all of our vintage revival pictures. Bringing back the feel of gay porn from the 70s to the 90s. Through aesthetic and cinematography. Everyone at Manticore has their own little niche to fill. Chuck shifts his weight and chuckles to himself, while Soren looks on in amusement. Anyways, I'll leave you two to get acquainted. Besides, I've got deliveries to sign for in the shipping room. I'll be back. Ah, oh, yeah, catch you later, Soren. So, anyways, yeah, dude, I'm a performer at Manticore Vid. I'm still pretty fresh around here, though. And I'm most deaf not an exclusive. Speaking of which, can I ask you something, Chuck? I've heard that term thrown around a lot. Exclusive. What does it even mean? Oh, seriously, Adam, it's just a fancy title for porn stars that sign to only do flicks for one studio. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. It seems very limiting. Well, like, it's got its perks. Exclusive stars are promoted hard and stuff. And they get paid way, way more. Tad even offered me an exclusive. And maybe it's dumb, but I turned it down. I don't want to be, like, put in a box, you know? Well, if it means more money and it's only a label, then I'd say go for it. Huh. Maybe so, huh? I mean, for exclusives like Obzi and Sky and whoevs, it's elevated them for sures. But to be honest, around here, it's really just a way to split the kings from the commoners, you know? And... I'm not about that life, man. I just want to, like, chill and focus on surfing and skip all the drama. It comes with way too much responsibility and, like, politics or whatever. You know what I mean, huh? <laughs> this just isn't my life. It's just a side hustle to put some pizza on the table, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose I do. Chuck is exactly what I thought a typical Californian would be like, based on hearsay and TV. Blonde, tanned, and beach bum-like. With a, a slow West Coast slur in their accents. I initially also expected Californians to be kind of stuck up. But Chuck was definitely not that. We share a good-natured chuckle before Soren slinks back with a curious smile on his face. Are you both done talking about me already? So obsessed. <laughs> well, and, and how could we not be? I smile at Soren jokingly. Ah, uh, how much truth is said in jest. As does Chuck, who's scratching his hairy chest from underneath his shirt. So, Adam, an important FYI, we'll both be on set today. Oh, both? Despite what Tad says, I'm not just some lowly secretary. I'm his personal assistant. And a damned ferocious one, if I do say so myself. Ha, ah, and you do say so. I do. 
and I'm going to make sure today runs as smoothly as possible. You guys, this is a really important scene. I'll be damned if I let this one go to shit. When the forecast calls for Hurricane Tad, make sure you call Soren. Why, many thanks, my Sir Chuck. Ha, <laughs> no problemo, dude. Hit me up when you both get back, yeah? Maybe we can uh, grab some bites or whatevs. Well, we'll see. It'll depend on what time we returned. Rad. See you guys later, then. Yeah, later, Chuck. Hey, um, why don't we carpool? I'll drive. That would be lovely. Driving my new girlfriend out to a porn shoot. Yay! What in the... We arrive on set to utter chaos. I've never seen so many people rushing about. Soren and I make eye contact. A psychic understanding between us. As interns and various film crews zip by. This is a f***ing disaster! Soren, you're late! And what's more, you made Adam late as well! There's two things that I will never be. One is late. The second is shouted out by a man in a pink sweater vest. Damn! I think I audibly gasped. Despite my best efforts. A confused and slightly shocked expression washes over Tad. And then, surprisingly, he calms down. This is the power of Soren. It's no wonder he's Tad's PA. It's not all pink. And you picked it out for me, damn it. That day you went to play personal shopper. Exactly. So you should know I would never do you wrong. Although... I did have this very back and forth in my head when I bought it for you. <laughs> you mean when you picked it out for me, and then I bought it for myself. Life is too pretty to be hung up on gray details. Soren, if I didn't think of you as my own, I would have fired your ass years ago. The three of us share an actual laugh together. But that quickly fizzles away. All right, fine. You two get a pass today. But that doesn't mean I can't still be pissed off at everyone else. Tad, what's wrong? Today is a f***ing cavalcade of idiocy. Amateurs. It's the 11th hour. I contracted the hottest new cinematographer. We only have the guy for a few hours. And we can't even shoot the fucking scene. Why not? Because one of the Wonder Twins here, John, didn't bring his damn STI papers. It's bullshit. But we legally cannot shoot the scene without proof of his status. And of course, since Tweedledum here can't perform, Tweedledee refuses to. I I'm mighty sorry, Tad. I'll make it up to you, I swear. Psh, don't get why you're so p***ed. You know the contract. I don't film without John. This is a joke. If you don't like it, you shouldn't have agreed to it, Ted. Hey, yeah, that's right. And you? John's eyes flash with an unreasonable rage. I have never seen anything like it. You have some nerve costing me money today. When all I do is stick up for your lazy fat. 
The only reason you get a pass from me is I know you can't help how stupid you are. I look on in horror as John gave what I thought was his friend a verbal beating. Isn't anyone going to interject? I look over at Tad, who is still obviously only thinking about himself and the production. Hey, stop. That's enough, John. He's had enough. John tilts his head, looking down at me with narrow eyes. A look of pure ice. Hey, shut the hell up. No one raises their voice to John. I don't need none of your help. No one asked you. Okay, so I think clearly John without the H is madly in love with John with the H. What? I can't believe John just yelled at me when I was only trying to defend him. All right, enough. You two, get your hair and touch-ups done. Adam will retrieve John's STI papers from the clinic. Hmm. I'll make it right. I will. You'll see. It's Sunset Health Clinic on Sunset Boulevard, about 20 minutes from here. The parking is sh**, but you'll make it work. Just tell them Tad sent you. And make it fast. I'm in a state of shock, unable to decline. So my first reaction is to fix the situation. Uh, okay, boss, you can count on me. And away I go to the STI clinic. I hop into my car as quickly as I can. My hair a frazzled mess. I, I put on some black sunglasses and blast off towards the clinic. Sunset Health Clinic, Sunset Boulevard. Luckily, the clinic was relatively barren, with only three people really waiting around. It should be easy enough. Quickly get in and then get out of here. I frown at the sterile smell of the place. Generally, I don't like getting tested. I mean, I understand why it's a good thing, but... I definitely don't enjoy it. I walk up front, but get distracted by the various papers and colorful pamphlets on offer. Um, hello? I is anyone here? Well, hello there, Nurse Evander. Hey there. I'd be that anyone. Sorry, I was faxing something out in the other room. But I'm here now. So, how can I help you? Whoever he is, he flashes me a look that instantly makes me forget what I was here for. Completely disarmed, his smile could ease a raging storm. Uh, I, I, I'm Adam. Oh, wow, dumb. That's not what he asked. He furrows his brow, but a playful and curious smile curves upward on his lip. Well, it's good to meet you. I'm Evander. Evander. What's his last name? Tolo Tologa? Evander Tologa? Tolosa? I can't quite see that. And I was just thinking... You've never been to our clinic before, have you? Most of our patients are regulars. So I always recognize a new face. He turns away from me to grab a clipboard while facing me. Wait, what? He turns away from me to grab a clipboard while facing me. The sentence is awkward. I think they mean to say that he, like, turns his body... He reaches back behind him to grab a clipboard while still facing. I think that would be a better... Right, anyway. I notice his arm flex. Hmm, yeah. 
It's then I realized that he knows I was focusing a little too much on his bicep. And I quickly trip over my words, hoping if I speak quickly, it'll distract him from my awkwardness. That never works. Uh, uh, yes, I'm new. I mean, I'd be a new patient. Except it's not really me. Okay, um, what do you mean? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I'm not here for me. I'm here on behalf of someone else. Huh. All right, I'll admit, I don't quite know where this is going, but I'm intrigued. This is a new one. And believe me, I have heard it all. Evander squints his eyes in a suspicious way, yet keeping that handsomely boyish smile. You have my full attention. Oh, I hope so. Because now that I'm here... I realize I'm likely asking a big favor of you. One that you probably won't and can't do. Well, when you put it that way, um, I really won't. <laughs> but go on. Give me a try anyways. Evander folds his rock-solid arms over his broad chest. But it's his hazel eyes that take hold of me. He has the most creamy tan that I could only hope for. And a cologne that reminds me of summer nights. Um, I'm visiting on behalf of Tad. Tad Lords. From Manticore Video. Close by. I don't know. He said that would mean something to you. I'm here to pick up some STI check results for one of our um, performers. At this point, he straightens himself out. Adam, is it? You're not here to pick up Sky's results, are you? Oh, boy. Interesting. So do we... We've got the insight point, so we could, we could spend that. That's easy enough. But do we... If I don't come back with John's STI results, Tad is going to have a cow. And again, I might lose my job. <sighs> Crap. Well, okay. We're here. We're here to find River. That's what we're here for. Yes, actually. I'm here to get River's results. Evander's smile softens even further into something quite tender. I thought it was you. The description River painted of you is actually exactly how I pictured you'd be. Unfortunately, even though I know you guys are close, I can't release his results to you. He has to be physically present. Anyways, it's been a while since he's visited. You should bring him by. So, you know him? You know my best friend? Well, he works a lot. So, he visits our clinic frequently. Most of the Manticore guys come here. Since it's nearby. He talks about you a lot. But, yeah, it's been a while. I hope he's doing all right. The fact that he openly knows River and confirms his existence just makes me feel like a weight's been lifted. I want to ask Evander so much more. How was River when he last saw him? Did he look ill? Did he look sad? Scared? Um, did I say something wrong? You look kind of upset, Adam. I feel an emotional vice clamp down on my throat and chest. No, no, I I'm all right. A and River is too. I'll definitely bring him around soon. I'm lying, of course. But I don't want to reveal everything to this person. Not yet, anyway. 
I need to remain cautious, just in case. All right. I love the sound of that, Adam. I'm going to hold you to that. And I assume Mr. Lords won't exactly be thrilled with you returning empty-handed. So, how about this? Why don't we get you tested today? That way, you have receipt of something. If you don't mind your friendly neighborhood nurse, um, this guy right here. Evander sweetly tugs at the ID tag by his heart. Assisting you today? That's that's a really nice offer, actually. I should probably do a check and get updated on my status. Admittedly, it's been a while. Great! But not today. Sorry, Evander. I, I should probably head back ASAP before I get in trouble. I would never want that for you. So, it's all good, Adam. Stop by if you have any questions regarding your health, treatments, or you just want to say hi. I will. Thanks, Evander. Or do you prefer Evan? Evan isn't unique enough for a weirdo like me. <laughs> Evander is good. Okay, I'll see you around then, Evander. Oh, Evander the nurse at the local STI clinic. Playtime's over for today, but Tad blew up at me. See, we knew. We knew. We knew when we didn't come back with John's STI report, he was going to have a cow. A conniption, as they say. Okay, well, so Hunter knows River. Soren knows River. Tad knows River. Evander knows River. We have lots of potential sources of information. Hopefully, we can start, you know digging into some of those sooner or later and getting some more information about River and, and what happened to him and where he is. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Come back again, and we'll see you next time right back here in the Sandbox.